Hey everybody, it's me, Super Paul Games. Let's hear an awesome song! See, that's the case. Welcome, revolutionaries. Let us bind the king and throw him into the sea. Fuck the king. It's time for a revolution. The revolution is at hand, and it is being televised on the interwebs. Um, let's pick a family name. We're going to be horrendous because we're going to be a horrendously good leader. We're going live in three... Two, one. For those just joining us, we are fortunate to have an audience today with our glorious leader. Excellency, last week we experienced the conclusion of the trial of the tyrant King Solomon, with his execution scheduled for next Friday. With the Great Revolution finally concluded, what will the future political structure of the People's Republic of Bisenji finally look like? Well, Zara, King Salman was a corrupt and sadistic man. Under his rule, our people served while he sold away our most sacred objects to pay for his own luxuries. Hundreds of thousands of souls died under his tyranny, yet he was tolerated by the American imperialists. His death will give us closure. But our work is only just beginning. The people's revolution is never really over. We must rebuild this country from the ashes. Reform it. The Revolutionary Council has put me in charge of the transitional government for the next five years to maintain order while a new constitution is drafted. One that meets the needs of all the people. Many were expecting your brother Farouk would be named by the Revolutionary Council as the interim leader of Besenji. What role will he have in the transitional government? Farouk is popular, to be certain, and was a fellow patriot of the revolution. He will be given an appropriate role in my cabinet. It is often said that the Americans are suspicious of our transitional government, and that you face a great deal of pressure from domestic interests seeking reforms. Our first priority is, of course, reconstruction. The American imperialists are of no concern at this time. Governance is not an easy task. But I assure the people that we will build a stronger Basenji together. Thank you again for your time, Excellency. It is a pleasure, Zara. That's right, sir. I am excellent. Most excellent. Horrendously excellent. This is Rogue State. So you saw kind of in the backstory what happened is... Right now we're playing as the glorious leader of the newly formed People's Republic of Basenji. You elect to set your office in the royal palace of the late tyrant. So the revolution has happened. The old king has been thrown into the sea, I guess. Outside, hundreds of workers dismantled the blood-stained barricades installed by monarchists last year. Another painful reminder of all that was lost in the war. So we were part of a revolutionary movement. Key revolutionary figures across the spectrum of political ideologies are now selfishly looking to be rewarded with appointments to inner circle cabinet positions. So right here we have four people and they want cabinet jobs and the top three are loyal people who are going to give us bonuses. Uh, the thing to the right is what faction they're in. This game is a little bit, it has elements that are a li little bit like Democracy 3. It's kind of like Democracy 3 on some awesome steroids. So if you keep the capitalists happy, these guys will give you bonuses. So we're going to put a capitalist in as the finance minister. We're going to put one in as the communications minister. His job will be to boost approval with all factions. He's going to be kind of like our propaganda minister. And then we're going to put a patriot in charge of defense. And then we're stuff, stuffed, stuck with Farouk, uh, Horrendos. He's our brother. He was our brother, and he was instrumental in helping the revolution happen, uh, which they kind of mentioned in the earlier, earlier, and we'll touch on a little bit later, but we're stuck with him because he was powerful, and he's a powerful force. We need to kind of keep him in our cabinet so he doesn't start a revolution of his own. So we're going to put him in as the foreign minister because the American imperialists supported the old king, uh, he will piss off the Americans, because wh whatever ministry he's in, he does a bad job.
Ah, uh, welcome to the office. There is, I, I'm guessing that's the original founder of Basenji, the dog Benji. I, maybe that was his name, I don't know. Excellency, my name is Tariq Badur. As parliamentary chief of protocol, it is my duty to ensure that your instructions reach our parliamentarians. I trust you have settled into your new office? May I offer some suggestions on our first steps to restoring order to Bajinji? Tariq, I suggest you go suck some dicks, but you can go stand in the corner while you wait. No, but please stay in case I have any questions. As you wish, excellent. Thanks, Tariq. You're being a dear. No, shut up. I have to draw circles on here. Stick men. Greetings, Your Excellency. I am Prime Minister Fatima Al-Farsi, and on behalf of Babelistan, I wanted to be the first to welcome the liberation of the People's Republic of Basenji from the tyranny of the Salman family. The Salman regime was a threat to the whole region. That is why we provided your rebellion with the weaponry and training necessary to overthrow the tyrants. Once the transitional government has restored Basenji's infrastructure and industry, let us work towards restoring our trade relationship. Do not hesitate to contact me if there is any way Babelistan can be of assistance to you. Thank you for your call. I am certain our two great nations will work together to bring great prosperity to the region. There is much work to be done, but I am grateful for your country's support. Um, thank you, lady. I will talk to you again. So this lady's country, she's the head of a nation, and we'll look at that shortly. She's the head of Babelstan. They helped us in our revolution. So she's just, like, being like, hey, remember us. Apologies, but I must go. Let us speak again later. Goodbye. You want to make out? Oh, sorry. Bye. I was having phone sex, Tariq. That's how cool dudes do it. You don't get any phone sex, do you, Tariq? Yeah, I know you don't. It's all right. So if we look at the regional map here, which I just flew to, that's Babelstan right there. That's her nation. There's some things we can do here. We can change our border control. We can assist them with uh, money for military stuff. Uh, their natural resources are goats and spices. There's Zarbal over here. They have spices and um, like textiles, clothes. Um, Agistan, which has oil and media products, like they have great TV shows. We can build an oil pipeline to them if we wish. Unfortunately for us, we don't know what our resources are yet. The reason we don't is because our economy was destroyed in the revolution. So let's go take a look at the newspaper. Don't check out my butt, Tariq. I know you want to. Yeah, you are. 50,010 Liberation Day Parade. Woo! We're free now. Youth are our most valuable resources. Really? Can you buy them in a store? Unprecedented policy shift from youth are not a resource at all. Glorious leader appoints senior cabinet positions. So we had to put our brother Farouk Krendas as the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Um, if we scroll down here, we can see uh, the approval. There are other places we can see approval too. Patriots, capitalists, fundamentalists like us a lot. Liberals are on the fence. Over here we can see how big each of these factions are. That's reminiscent, sort of, of Democracy, the game. So we'll put that down. Right here is how much money we have and how much money we make a turn. Right here is our, like, parliamentary support and how much it's growing or dropping by turn. These are each of the factions. These are the Patriots. Patriots believe in keeping Basenji for its people. They are supportive of protecting our environment, taking a strong stand against international pressure, and having a robust, ooh, I like bust, military so we can be uh, defending its threats against our sovereignty. Patriots have little interest in social programs and absolutely no patience for civil unrest. Um, next to them are the capitalists, uh, the fundamentalists, and the liberals. In fact, we'll go through all of them right now. The capitalists seek prosperity and support measures that promote international trade, business development, and reduce tariffs. They highly encourage foreigners to visit our country and are singularly responsible for a burgeoning tourism section. All this being said, they are interested in keeping as much money as possible to themselves and will take a strong stand against any new taxes or regulations. If you look at the fundamentalists, they love to have fun! Isn't that what it is? Fundamentalists believe the old ways are the best. As the world changes around them, they hope that you will continue to incorporate faith in your decisions and do best to limit the corruption of our virtue by foreign relations and values. It's too bad that they're not tangry, so I could be like, Goose God, honk! Some fundamentalist practices have led to deep concern from the international community, drawing unwelcome attention to Basenji. So obviously we have all these forces that have different belief structures, like the fundamentalists and liberals will often have different beliefs. 
Liberals believe that Basenji should strive towards equality and tolerance for all. They support civil actions which alleviate social ills, protect civil liberties, and promote both individual and human rights. Keeping them happy will not be cheap. They desire improvements to health and education and government regulation in the marketplace in order to keep private interests from exploiting this country. So we've kind of looked at the main factions there. We're going to run over here and we're going to look at Parliament. Hey, Tariq. Keep your eyes, you know, up by the... My, my head's up here, man. Don't be looking at my crotch. I know you want to, Tariq. I'm a hot, glorious leader. This is our parliament. Uh, you can see that we have 60 loyal points. There we are. Obviously, the closer to green it is, the more supportive they are. The closer to the red, the more um, disloyal they are. Here are our ministers. Iqbal Ajabiri. He's a capitalist. He's helping out our um, finances. Nadal Bashara. He's a capitalist. Uh, he's our Minister of Communications. Uh, she Abu Taya, uh, she's our Defense Minister. She's helping out our approval there. And then our brother Farouk Rendez, who is hurting our relations with the United States of America, because he's a jerk-off, but whatever. Um, and if you see right here, there's a thing that says Karifi Caucus. And that's important, because our nation is divided into two big groups. We'll run over to the encyclopedia and show you that. I know this is a lot of exposition right now. Yeah, you check out that butt streak. I know you're going to be thinking about it later. Keep your man meat in your pants. Not in my pants. Um, let's read about Babelstan. No, wait, no, not Babelstan. Basenji, that's our country. The People's Republic of Basenji is a coastal Middle Eastern state with a population of over 4.6 million. That's us! Consisting primarily of Basenjis to the north and west, ethnic uh, Karifi to the south. So that's that little section we just looked at in Parliament. So they're like a minority, maybe like the Kurds or the Sunni in Iraq. So they're a little different than the rest of the population. karifi basini relations have been amicable for the past century. The Karifi view themselves as culturally distinct within Basinji. They see themselves as their own group. Until recent months, the King of Basinji was ruled with the support of the United States and other Western powers by oppressive and corrupt Salman family for 67 years. That's right, America and the West, they supported these crooks that oppressed my people! Damn you, Uncle Sam! Under King Solomon, criticism, criticism of the government was outlawed. Tens of thousands were imprisoned without trial for minor offenses, and many more died from starvation. Last year, five police officers murdered a teenager over a minor dispute, and the resulting public outrage was enough to boil over a pot mm, that had been simmering with frustration for dec decades. Oh, a pot of frustration is disgusting. Inspired by the Arab Spring, the subsequent, subsequent Basenji Revolution was fast and violent. The military leadership largely refused orders to fire upon their own people, and only a few resisted the tidal wave of anti-monarchist rebellion. See, we're like, no, screw you, King Solomon. I'm tired of you arresting me because I peed at the movie theater on a seat on some old lady. That should be legal. The immediate Salman family was captured months after the re revolution began and were similarly executed for their crimes against the people. As we heard in the joyous song to begin with, they were tied up and thrown into the uh, motion. The monarchy was disbanded and the country was reforged as the People's Republic of Basenji. True democracy was promised for the people. But the Revolutionary Council has entrusted you to ensure post-war stability for the next five years until free elections can be held. So basically we have five years, I believe that till that's till turn 50, to not get overthrown and to try and bring some sort of peace to this country. Um, if we're gonna look at Karif, um, the little ethnic subgroup in our nation, Karif are an ethnic subgroup of Basenji with a sizable fundamentalist population that are rigid adherents to the tenements of the old ways. Most ethnic Karif live in the southern territories and experience an overall greater unemployment rate, deteriorating infrastructure, and more limited access to fresh water. So not only do they have different beliefs than us, they live in substandard living compared to the rest of Basenji. Karifi separatism is an issue that was raised in Basinji politics whenever the southern economy suffered under King Solomon. The suppression of political parties and the reign of tyranny of the royal family kept sentiments of separation largely academic. So these Karifi who wanted to be their own country never got to be because the king would just shoot them all. With the Reformation, Reformation of Basenji as a republic, Karifi separation has returned to civic 
discourse, justifications for Griefy's sovereignty are histor historically ethno-nationalistic, claiming that the unique culture and dialect of the population are threatened with the assimilation by the rest of the Basinji, and the best way to preserve the fundamentalist regime's, uh, region's identity and culture is via the creation of an independent theocracy. So not only are the Griefy poorer than us, they are much more fundamentalist. They are much more religious than the rest of the Basinji people, which makes that difficult. So we can't just be like, oh, liberal all the way, because then there's a strong ethnic subgroup that might want to revolt. Grief extremists have been known on rare occasion to kidnap and ransom businessmen over the past decade. That is not something we want to cause problems with. And then we have two other main focus characters. One of them is the general of the military. He's in the next room over. We'll look at him. After this, the exposition is done, I promise you. After this in Farouk. Uh, general Nader Eder holds the title of the chief military advisor of the transitional government. In practice, he is the liaison between the glorious leader and the common command structure of the Basinji Army, Navy, and Air Force. Born August 26, 1961, he served as general of the Basinji Army at the time of the revolution. So when we go into the command center in the next room, and we will momentarily, we'll see um, Nader Adad there. He reports to us, but it's it, it's not like he's super loyal. There is a cult of personality surrounding General Adad that may even rival yours or Farouk's. At the height of the revolution, when King Salman ordered the army to open fire upon the non-violent Tabor market protests, the general is said to have deliberately ignored those orders and pulled the army back as a sign of support for the rebels. So people are like, he's awesome, he's with us, he didn't attack the rebels. The failure of the army to quell those protests is often cited as the first sign of the monarchy's loss of control, and post factum he is largely regarded as a hero for his deliberate inaction. The reality, however, is less noble. General uh, Dadis is a practice, or uh, Adidas? General Dad is. Oh, I'm sorry. There's no space between that. I thought it was Adidas. He was a general sneaker. General Dad is a practical problem solver and an expert in self preservation. He has risen through the ranks because of shrewd calculation rather than bravery or patriotic zeal. Although he has done much to ensure that the military remains more or less loyal to you, he still harbors private skepticism about your ability to retain power for much longer. Nadia will faithfully discharge your orders for a time, but he suspects that one day he will abandon his place by your side, and you will never see or hear from him, his wives, or three sons again. My three sons. So our general is basically wishy-washy. We know he's loyal as long as we are popular. That is a tenuous situation to be in. And then on top of that, we have a bigger threat than whether or not the general does or doesn't defend us. And that is our brother. Farouk is your older brother by three years. As a senior member of the Basinji Communist Alliance, he directed two attempted coups against King Solomon in the decade leading up to the revolution. He was imprisoned in 2006, but escaped in 2008. Man, my older brother is awesome! But at the beginning of the revolution, he was instrumental in the coordination of demonstrations, marches, occupations of plazas, riots, nonviolent civil resistance, acts of civil disobedience, and strikes. He grew, our brother grew the revolutionary movement to hundreds of thousands of size from a range of social, economic, and religious backgrounds demanding the overthrow of King Salman. So really, our brother is the central key figure in making sure the revolution happened. Most noteworthy, he alone was able to broker consensus between the Quarifi, uh, Quarifi the little group, liberal, anti-capitalist, nationalist, and feminist interest groups. He's like, I know what it's like to put a tampon in me too. Oh, brother Froke, you're crazy. When Salman ordered the army to open fire on the revolutionary moment, hit movement, his leadership is cited as the critical factor to keeping casualties low. So really, our brother was a big leader in the revolution. Like, he, he's angry and frustrated now. Why? Because many were surprised that the revolutionary council chose you... Me, us, over to him to lead the transitional government, and he won't let you forget it. Keeping him out of your cabinet would severely destabilize your public support, so for now, you're stuck with each other. So basically, Farouk, our brother, thinks he should be in charge of the nation. The Revolutionary Council probably put us in charge because they're scared he'll become a tyrant. But we need him in the cabinet because without his power, there will be civil war. So we're really in a tough situation, and if we're not careful, our brother will lead a revolt against us. Um, the rest of these um, other countries in the United States, we might look at it in a future visit video. So we're going to run over to the situation. Just room, just a quick moment. We're not going to do a lot in there. But we're just going to run over there. Looking good, Tariq. Keep your hands. Don't steal my stuff. Don't steal my picture of stick men with dicks I drew. That's important. 
And over there is General Adad, Nadir Adad, the, the guy I read about before Farouk, the military commander who is very pragmatic that people think is a hero, but he goes what way the wind blows. Uh, if we take a quick look at this, this is our strategic overview table where we can look at our military. Right now we have uh, borders on, or uh, an army on the an infantry division on the border of Babelstan, one on Zarbil, one on Adjikstan. Babelstan is the one that helped us with our revolution. But now we are done with the exposition, basically. I'm sorry for so much exposition, but that is the basic concept of the game, which I think is super cool. Oh, the other thing I didn't mention is um, when I can move the arrow again, I'll show you in a second. What's up, Tariq? Right here, that is our overall popularity, 59%. So let us go to the policies book. Because I haven't shown you any of the stuff at the top. That would be F1 on there, with the kind of like Sims money sign. So here are the different factions. And we're going to implement some laws to try and make them happy. Right now, the patriots are getting happier as time goes on. The fundamentalists more happy. Capitalists less. Liberals less. So we want to institute a minimum wage that makes the capitalists more unhappy because they don't want to pay more. It makes the liberals more happy. You can see their negatives going down. So we're going to put a low minimum wage. Employers must pay a minimum wage to workers set at a level comparable to Iran, Ecuador, Hungary. We're going to allow gambling. That's going to make fundamentalists mad because the old way does not approve of that. It'll make capitalists happier. We're going to put a little bit of money in disaster relief. We're going to put a little bit money in homelessness. Homeless relocation program. Homeless individuals are forcibly re relocated from tourism and commerce centers to the outskirts of our cities. So basically, whenever American tourists come to our hotels or rich European tourists, they don't see the homeless people because we go kick them out on their asses. They go live in slums out there. We have some disability support. A little bit. Limited disability grants um, for people with certain physical impairments. Like, I don't know, if you suck in a wheelchair, we're going to have some social safety net. We're going to open up a free trade zone. There will be certain geographic areas that are set aside for free trade zones. Capitalists really like that. And if you look at how things are right now, we are gaining support with the Patriots, holding steady with the Fundamentalists, and losing support with the Capitalists and Liberals. Um, do we dare? We're going to raise our law enforcement money too. Um, model law enforcement, police are disciplined and well-trained. That's going to make the Patriots like us even more. And if we take a real quick look, we're going to just fly over to the um, uh, Parliament in a second. Let's see. So we want the capitalists to be happy because we have one minister that's a capitalist, two ministers that are capitalists, and one that's a Patriot. So those are the factions I most care about because these guys can affect Parliament. Our ministers can. So we've affected that. Let's go to the treasury. We're going to raise taxes. Uh, we want to be careful because any tax increase is going to make people unhappy. I think we're going to increase taxes by 2%. We want to keep that budget balanced. And then one of the very important things is we're going to go to build infrastructure, which you do by looking out the window, of course. Our economy is devastated. Look at this. Because of the war, things are broken. So we're going to spend 10, of our, 10 million to restore water and sewage. And we're going to spend 30 million to increase power. And then we have an option to allow foreign, foreign workers. So we can either allow foreign medical teams to come in to help us with health care costs. Or if you see these, to rebuild other things, banks, um, telecommunication things to get our economy on tr track. There's a lot of rubble and shit in the way. Streets are broken up. We can allow foreign aid workers and engineering team in here. Engineers will move debris, stabilize structures, and restore roadways. So right now, it would take to tur uh, turd? turn three before we can restore banks. We're going to do this. We're going to allow foreign engineers to come in. It's going to make the military happy happier with us. It's going to make it so reconstruction takes less time. Look, now right away on turn two, we can restore banks and TV communications and stuff. So the people will suffer a little bit in the long time, long, or short term, but in the long term, we're going to bring the economy back faster. And I think this is where we'll end the first video. The next video is things will move faster because there's less exposition. We should remember this moment right now before everything goes really good or really bad. 
This moment which Rick creepily was staring at our horrendous dude's booty as he looks out and contemplates the future of what is this country's place named Ben what is it? Dogland. I'll see y'all next time. Thanks so much for hanging out.